Hello, everybody. I'm Paul Beckwith, and in this video, I want to talk about a new paper that's just come out called Amplification of Northern Hemisphere Winter Stationary Waves in a Warming World. It's all about the jet stream waviness and how in the winters in the Northern Hemisphere, we're getting jet streams getting stuck into a very powerful ridge which causes uh, drought in the um, North American Northwest. And it also causes uh, very heavy rainfall and unsettled conditions up along the Alaska coast. But before I talk about that, um, if you're not familiar, I have a, um, a store, Paul Beckwith store, where I'm selling basic uh, merchandise my son's idea so there's this hat you know make america go away it's not my favorite choice americans are friends it's just the government doing crazy things and uh this is one of the uh t-shirts so basically the slogans that you've heard from me what happens in the arctic doesn't stay in the arctic connecting the dots on abrupt climate system mayhem what you see is the uh, ocean current globally, and you have the Gulf Stream coming up here. So if the AMOC shuts off, then we're going to have abrupt climate system mayhem. And this is how I basically, uh, the little blurb I give in the description of all my videos, you recognize this saying, connecting the dots on abrupt climate system mayhem. So uh, the store is just up and running. And uh, you can support my work by uh, buying a t-shirt with one of my slogans or something. Anyway, uh, let me get to this paper here. And there's more stuff that's going to be coming very shortly, more designs, etc. But, you know, please have a look. You could just Google Paul Beckwith store or you can look in the description of the video for the direct link. So this paper was just published very recently. So what it does is it looks at a, it looks at a climate model, the Global Regional Integrated Model, or GRIM for, sh for short, and it looks at the mechanisms behind the recent intensification of winter stationary waves of the jet stream over Western North America. What it finds is that the biggest factor causing this intensification of this persistent or stuck uh, jet stream pattern, which causes very uh, large numbers of extreme weather events, is the first thing is the sea surface temperature warming is the biggest factor. It causes the westerly winds, the winds from the west to the east, to strengthen. So then, therefore, it amplifies a ridge, a strong ridge in the meridional north-south direction that characterizes these stationary waves or stationary patterns of the jet stream in Western North America. The next uh, biggest factor be after the sea surface temperature is the sea ice um, concentration decline. So as we get more and more Arctic sea ice declining, we get more and more exposed ocean. The ocean heats up, so we get different uh, temperature patterns over in the ocean, but also in the atmosphere above the ocean. And that also leads to an amplification and strengthening of the blocking, if you like, of the stationary, um, the extent of the ridge, the pressure ridge of the jet streams. And, uh, you know, over, over the um, Western North America and, you know, the trough is coming up by Alaska. So we get unsettled weather there more rainfall or snowfall, etc. So ocean warming is the primary driver of the changes in the westerly winds and also in the stationary waves in the northern hemisphere. Sea ice losses exert a considerable effect through a different mechanism, and it actually complements the dominant influence of the ocean warming on these atmospheric jet stream changes. So oceans play a crucial role, tropical oceans, in modulating global warming's effect on the stationary waves in the north northern hemisphere. 
and they looked at it for the for the winter. So, you know, it, it adds to what is more generally called, you know, Arctic amplification or Arctic temperature amplification or polar amplification. You know, much more quick, much more quickly warming poles lowers the temperature gradient to lower latitudes, causing the jet streams to slow down and become wavier and get stuck in place, therefore increasing the frequency, severity, and duration of extreme weather events. Okay, so let's have a look at the results, okay? Uh, well, first of all, you know, just a little bit here, the intensification of these stationary waves of the jet stream in the winter across the Western North America presents a cru critical problem in climate dynamics because it has profound implications for the regional hydro climate changes. So, so the precipitation amounts. So we're getting a persistent upper tropospheric ridge. So this is a jet stream ridge and it becomes, it's a key component of what's called, we call the North American winter dipole. So we get stationary waves, jet stream waves in the winter, and that's getting more and more attention because it drives extreme weather events, like the extreme droughts that are occurring in the Western US, and the, they're uh, worsening due to global warming. Okay, so the dynamics, this is a study into the d dynamics of how things are changing uh, to cause these uh, stationary waves to occur. And the maintenance and intensification of these stationary waves, it says, involves a delicate balance between a various atmospheric processes governed by the rotation, the vorticity of the winds, the dynamics of that. Um, and you know, in order to project how things will change in the future, um, these studies are very, very important. So the relative contributions of the different forcing mechanisms, so particularly ocean warming and sea ice loss to these stationary waves, how they're forming and how they're strengthening, that's a subject of active de debate. So this paper adds to that study. It looks, it, 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 it does climate models, it looks. Go, it it samples through. I think a hundred different winters, and it looks at the different patterns. So so let's have a look at the results. Average over a hundred winters, ten different initial conditions, and what we can look at is this is the the eddies that form the gyrations, um, and you can see with a simulated temperature of plus one Celsius, plus two Celsius, plus three Celsius, you can see. These patterns become more extreme, and uh, what we basically have is this is a where the where where the red areas are. You've got very very you know you can think of the jet stream ridge here, and uh, the trough over here. So you get very very wet conditions over here, very very dry conditions over here, and those intensify as the warming increases. That's the main factor. Then they try to tease out the sea surface temperature and the sea ice concentration effects. Um, and uh, you can see with both of these effects in place, this is the uh, conditions here on the vorticity, you know, increasing um, in, 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 in uh, you know, over, over, a mat over time. And you can see, you know, with one degree temperature rise, two degrees, three degrees, that the effects of uh, get more extreme for the um, the jet stream waviness in the north south direction, the meridional excursions. Ocean forcing plays a dominant role. The primary source for causing these stationary waves is tropical ocean warming, and following that is the sea ice. So, so they they teased out. Th this is the. Um, the surface water flux over the northern hemisphere, um, and you can see, you know, this area here is um, just off the coast. So this area has more and more rainfall, and this area here is it becomes drier and drier. Uh, actually, it's better it's better teased out here. This is the effects 
of increased temperatures if you just look at the sea surface temperature component. So you can see that, uh, you know, as you get more and more warming, the sea surface temperature component causes a big effect in what we see here, the different colors. Uh, the, the red gets deeper, more intense, and uh, you have the troughs here in the blue areas. If you look at the sea ice concentration effect, you see a similar pattern to the sea surface temperature, but it's much lower, uh, lower, smaller effect. So the dominant effect is clearly the sea surface temperature. The sea ice concentration is adding to the sea surface temperature effect, but it's definitely a much smaller component. And uh, you can also see that um, down here. This is the changes with sea surface temperature plus sea ice concentration. So you can see there's a powerful uh, ridge, red area, warming and dryness. And over on this side is where the trough is and you get the unsettled weather, higher precipitation, etc. So Alaska, the, the side of Ala the coastal edge of Alaska is being hit with more precipitation and uh, we're getting dry conditions in, in the, in the uh, western part of the U.S. here. Okay, and then you can look at the sea surface temperature component alone, and you can see that comparing the total, the net effect, and the sea surface temperature, the sea surface temperature is causing most of the um, state, most, most of the, uh, is causing the, the, the jet stream wave to become stationary and very high ridged, very high temperatures. Um, and this is, of course, temperature plus one degree, two degrees, three degrees, and so on, and same with here. So you can see most of the effect is from the sea surface temperature, but there is an effect also from the sea ice concentration, which adds, so if you add this row to this row, then you get the total effect up here. But this kind of divides it up into the different mechanisms of, of forcing. So it's a very interesting paper. Um, and, uh, it was just published, um, it was just published in the, very recently, let's, what's the publication date? Is it on, is it on here? Um, yeah, they usually put the date somewhere here. It just says 2025 in the issue here. They don't give the, uh, specific date, but I think this paper just came out. Anyway, a link is in the description of the video. So, uh, I thought I would show you this study because, you know, I've often talked about how the temperature distribution on the planet is very important. It's not just the warming per se, and the poles are uh, getting darker and darker as we lose sea ice and snow cover, especially sea ice cover in the last few years. You know, we're pushing at global minimum records of, of sea ice coverage that exposes a lot of the ocean below to additional warming, which melts more ice and it's a vicious feedback uh, spiral or cycle. And that leads to greatly warming uh, conditions in the Arctic and Antarctica. And that lowers the temperature difference to the equator. So the jet streams go, get, go slower, get wavier, they get stuck in place and we get an increase in the frequency, severity, and duration of extreme weather events, you know, and this is a, a global phenomena. So this is a paper that adds support to it, specifically focusing on two main areas in North America, on, you know, Western North America, and also uh, Alaska. Okay, well, thank you for listening. Please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net and donating to PayPal to support my research and videos or go to the uh, online store, Paul Beckwith store and consider, uh, you know, hats and t-shirts uh, to, to get the message out about how climate disruption is affecting the entire planet. Thanks for listening and bye for now.